Crownfall Act 4 is finally out. A new overworld map, a new hero, new minigames and more. Also, the Crownfall storyline officially concludes, so now that the event is officially over, here are the good, the bad and the uglies of this entire thing. Starting off with the good things, money-wise this has undoubtedly been the best event we've gotten. You can spend a total of 6.7 euros times 4 for all the goodies that exist on the map, plus at least 5 more royal bundles. If you don't want to buy the Pathfinder packs, you can always remain an F2P player and still get the good stuff for free. So either way, everyone is winning. I love the addition of recycling and donations to Crownfall's BP Cavern Crawl style. Cavern Crawl always felt like a non-stop grind and the reward wasn't even that great. This quality of life feature is surely something that must be kept for future events. I love Kez. His design is amazing. I think this is a hero that truly feels different. It has so many things, but it actually takes skill to play him. I think there should be some tweaks here and there, but overall this hero is what we've needed since Muerta's release. Ringmaster is cool, I guess, but his design is a bit underwhelming. Ringmaster's voice acting is insanely good, though. I'm a showman. The rest of you are the circus. This improved candy works is amazing. I've got so many mortals that I've wanted for so long, but never really intended to buy them. While it's an amazing thing to have, it is also fair because all the upgrades for the caravan are basically acquired by grinding each act. The minigames have totally caught me off guard when they were first added to the game in Act 1. Even now they sort of surprise me. Kudos to whoever at Valve thought of adding minigames to Crown Falling. Incredibly unique idea and probably the highlight of this entire event. I haven't got to play all the ones from Act 4 yet, but the ones we've had till now have been great. As someone who's played Flash games for quite some time during his childhood, seeing all these minigames has taken me on a big nostalgia trip. The main and side stories of Crownfall are pretty funny. Getting to dive into a world where every single main or side character has a well-defined personality feels so much better than just playing a dry battle pass with no real meaning. And not even kidding, I finally found out some things about each hero's lore and behavior. I don't really know anything about the lore of the game besides what I've seen in the Dota 2 Netflix series and what I've heard while listening to hero voice lines. I wouldn't have thought that Crystal Maiden is so fierce and so... hungry. The easter eggs are also pretty nice and they really remind me of gaming the 2000s and early 2010s. A time when everything was less serious. The bad. Why are double down tokens still in the game? No, I'm dead serious, why are they still in the game? I don't know one good thing coming out of these. Nobody likes them besides immortal win traders. Pros have called them out. Noobs have called them out, I've also made a video regarding this issue, people hate double down tokens, so why are they still in the game? Immortal Valve was a somehow decent game mode before them. Since Valve has made them easy to get, Immortal Valve has been an actual battlefield in any imaginable way possible. People were already hating each other, but now? Now Immortal matchmaking is beyond repair. Absolute disaster of a feature and I hope to remove it for good. The delay and lack of communication between Act 3 and Act 4 were really not justified. Listen, I for one couldn't be bothered by delays or lack of communication, I can just play another game in case I get bored or I can actually go on and focus on my real life goals. Either way, life goes on. But when you have a community as large as Dota's, you need to assure them that there's at least some progress on our next update. This event is not a battle pass where you can just jerk around till people grind it and then you cash out. This is a thing that needs to be constantly updated, to be constantly taken care of, constantly talked about. My advice for this would be to make more lesser acts, not just four. I think act four could have easily been split into two acts. Also, can we please have a discord server with the devs just like Deadlock has? But please don't make it public, let it be invite only. The amount of people who just harass the devs would be beyond anyone's comprehension. I think Pathfinder packs should be more evened out. There's no way I'm the only one who thinks that Act 3's pack is beyond terrible while the others are awesome. I think a terrain would have been nice and I think lots of people wanted to play Dota on a palace themed terrain. Both of Ricky's blades should have been immortal. Yeah, I get it. The other one is a feeder. No. Actually, screw it. I don't get it. Why the other... Why is the other blade not an immortal? I think the other blade should have been an immortal that changes your backstab animation. Why isn't that a thing? That's the only thing that Ricky misses as an immortal and this could have been the perfect opportunity to actually give it to us. Just gross. 
I will use this part of the video to talk about the need for a PvE event. Dota's mechanics and heroes usually work amazing in a PvE event. The last time we had a PvE event was almost 3 years ago when Valve gave us the Aghanim's Conundrum Battle Pass update. I don't really want Aghanim's Labyrinth back since I think this has been milked for too long, but a PvE campaign like Sealbreaker would be pretty sweet. I wasn't really expecting a PvE event, but I really really wanted to play one. I wish the community would just consider making a PvE custom game for Crownfall. Getting out of Skyrath, walking around in the deserts of Druid, climbing Ice Rack and storming Queen Imperia's castle would have been the dream. Not having one isn't necessarily a bad thing, I think the minigames make up for it, but Sealbreaker and Aghanim's Labyrinth have been big Dota for me. Listen, I love Dota just as much as most of you do, but a PvE game mode is needed from time to time. The game can get boring, toxic and simply not fun sometimes. PvE is what I call an innate break from Dota. Not even kidding, I think I've spent 500 hours playing Sealbreaker on the arcade because I just miss playing a Dota PvE. I loved Crownfall, despite all the setbacks and mistakes, this event felt so much better than most battle passes. The only battle pass that might have been on par with Crownfall is the 2020 battle pass during the pandemic. I really love that thing, but in the same time Crownfall might be a bit better. What is your opinion, and what feedback would you give to Valve regarding Crownfall? Let me know in the comments section down below, and as always I will see you in another video.